In this section, we will create a simple stair object and place it between the upper and middle levels of the concrete base. First, we will create a new class for the stairs. Click on the Classes button in the toolbar. In the Organization dialog, click New. Name the class Stairs and click OK. Make the Stairs class the Active class by clicking in the Active class column to the left of the class name in the Organization dialog. A check mark will appear. Click OK to save the changes and exit the Organization dialog. In the Standard Views menu, in the View Bar, select Top slash Plan View. Switch to the Walls toolset and activate the Simple Stair tool. Move your cursor over the concrete base. You will see a preview of the Simple Stair object. Move your cursor to the left edge of the tapered face between the upper and middle level of the concrete base. Click once towards the bottom of the concrete base, then move your cursor to the right, and click once more to set the rotation. In the Object Properties dialog, set the following values. Leave all other values default. Style, Masonry, Width, 6. Floor to floor height 1.5, max riser 0.2, tread depth 0.45, check draw top tread, click OK to place the simple stair object. Next, we will use a datum to position the simple stair object, then adjust its elevation. Click and hold on the bottom right corner of the simple stair object. Drag to the intersection of the right edge of the tapered face and the bottom of the concrete base. Continue to hold down the left mouse button. When the Smart Cursor Q endpoint appears, press the G key on the keyboard to place a datum. Press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. You can now release the mouse button. Enter 3.5 in the Length field. Press Tab once to set the length and then move the cursor up vertically until you intersect the length constraint represented by the dashed red circle. When the Smart Cursor Q vertical slash length appears, click once to move the stairs. Now, switch to a left isometric view by using the Standard Views menu in the View Bar. You will see the stairs are below the surface of the concrete base. With the simple stair still selected, in the Object Info palette, change the Z to 1.5. The stairs will now be partially above the surface of the concrete base. Finally, let's adjust the tapered face so that it matches the angle of the stairs. Using the Flyover and Pan tools in the Basic palette, adjust your view so that you can more easily see and snap to the bottom edge of the stairs. Note, if you have a mouse with a middle button, you can quickly enable the Pan tool by holding down this button. Also, you can enable the Flyover tool by holding the Control key on your keyboard and the middle mouse button. In the 3D Modeling toolset, activate the Taper Face tool. Click on the upper surface of the concrete base to set the reference plane. Then click on the tapered face to adjust the taper angle. Snap the cursor to the bottom edge of the stairs and click once to adjust the angle of the face. Now that these stairs are complete, let's duplicate and modify the stairs for the other side of the concrete base. Switch back to a top slash plan view. Press the X key to activate the selection tool and select the stairs. Click and drag the stairs vertically to the other side of the concrete base. While still holding the mouse button down, press and hold the Control key on Windows or Option key on Mac on your keyboard. A small plus sign will appear next to the cursor. Keep the Control or Option key pressed and release the mouse button to duplicate the stairs. With the duplicated simple stair object selected, change the width to 4.5 in the Object Info palette. Next, click and drag the top right corner of the stairs 
until the cursor intersects the right edge of the tapered face and the top of the concrete base. While still holding down the left mouse button, press the G key to place a datum, and then press the Tab key to activate the floating data bar. You can now release the mouse button. Enter 5 for the length field, press Tab, then move down vertically until you intersect the length constraint represented by the dashed red circle. When the Smart Cursor queue Object slash Length appears, click once to move the stairs. Switch to a left isometric view to confirm the placement of the stairs. We will now add the two stair objects to the concrete base object using the Add Solids command. Select both the simple stair objects and the concrete base by holding the Shift key and clicking on each object. Go to Model, Add Solids. The stairs and the concrete base are now one solid addition object. Next, we will create a set of curved stairs between the middle and lower levels of the concrete base. Switch to a top slash plan view, activate the line tool in the basic palette, now trace the segment line of the curved face. Click once at the intersection of the segment line and the left edge, then click once more at the intersection of the segment and the right edge. Switch to the arc tool in the basic palette. Enable the second mode, three points mode. Click once on the start point of the line we just drew. Then move the cursor down along the curve. When the Smart Cursor queue midpoint appears, click again. Continue to move down along the curve and click a final time at the end of the curve. Repeat this process for the curve on the right. Using the same technique, Draw one more arc connecting the bottom of the two arcs we just drew. Select the three arcs, and in the Attributes palette, set the fill to None. You may need to use the B key to select the arc on the left. Now, to make these objects easier to work with, click on the Classes button in the View bar, and set the Concrete Base class to Invisible, and click OK. Select the arc on the left, activate the Offset tool in the Basic Palette, enable the Offset by Distance and Duplicate and Offset modes, and set the distance to 1.43. Click once to the right of the arc on the left to create an offset duplicate. If the offset arc does not extend past the top line and the bottom arc, switch to the Selection tool, select the arc, Click and drag the top and bottom blue control handles of the arc to increase the sweep of the arc. Next, activate the Polygon tool in the Basic Palette, enable the Inner Boundary mode in the toolbar, click once in between the arc on the left and the offset arc, then click once in between the offset arc and the arc on the right. Select both of the polylines we just created, go to Edit, Cut. This will remove the polylines temporarily. Activate the Offset tool again and set the distance to 0.715. Hold down the Alt key on Windows or the Command key on Mac and click on the arc in the center. Click once to the left of the selected arc. Hold down the Alt or Command key again and select the arc in the center again. Click once to the right of the selected arc. Now, switch to the Selection tool, select the arc in the center, and press Delete to remove it. Activate the Polygon tool in the Basic Palette with the Inner Boundary mode still enabled. Click once in between the arcs we just created. With only the newly created filled polyline selected, Go to Edit, Invert Selection. This will select all other visible objects. Press the Delete key to remove these objects. Only the filled polyline should be left. Next, go to Edit, Paste in Place. 
This will paste the two filled poly lines we used the cut command to remove earlier. They will be placed in the same location they were previously. Press the B key to activate the X-ray select mode. Select the poly line that is underneath the two poly lines we just placed. Go to Modify, Send, Send to Front. Set the Concrete Base class to Visible by going to the Classes button in the view bar, switching the Concrete Base class to Visible in the Visibility column, and clicking OK. Now select only the left polyline, go to Model, Extrude, set the extrusion to 0.4, and click OK. Select the middle polyline, Go to Model, Extrude, set the extrusion to 0.8, and click OK. Finally, select the right polyline, go to Model, Extrude, set the extrusion to 1.2, and click OK. Switch to a left isometric view, select all three extrudes, and go to Model, Add Solids. Press the B key to activate the X-ray Select mode. Click and drag the top right corner of the stairs so that it intersects with the top edge of the curved face. The Smart Cursor Q Object slash Z will appear. Switch to a left rear isometric view. Activate the Push slash Pull tool in the 3D Modeling toolset and enable the second mode, Move Face Mode. Move your cursor over the left face of the stairs. The face will highlight in red. Click once and move the face inward. When the floating data bar shows approximately negative 4, click once to complete the action. With the stairs still selected, in the Object Info palette, set the class to Stairs. Finally, set the fill color to the same gray as the concrete base in the Attributes palette. 